Hello guys, I hope you're all keeping well. I've been going back through the archives of some of the build footage that we took when we were building the Sprinter and I've come across some footage which I never released. So I've put together a little video which shows me installing the shower and me plumbing our Thetford toilet. Now not everything goes according to plan and you'll see as the video progresses we had a few issues with the toilet. The job for today is to fit the shower mixer into the shower cubicle. What I've gone for is this manual mixer valve. It takes a hot and a cold supply. It was just a budget end one that I got from B&Q. It was just a tad under £50. So I'd imagine you'd get a similar sort of thing at Lowe's or something like that in America. Just a chrome plated mixer, manual mixer, not thermostatic. It's got a hot and a cold supply. And then what I've done, these have got 15mm compression tails on here. So I've just taken a short piece of copper. So I've just made that joint with a bit of jointing paste. No PTFE tape because this is a compression fitting. The joint's made between the olive and the fitting. So just a little bit of paste on there. And then what I'll do once I get through the wall of the shower with this copper is I'll put these John Guest push fit elbows on the other side and then I'll convert from 15mm down to 12mm with these adapters. This is a 15mm stem end, so that'll push into one end of the bend, and then that'll leave me with 12mm that I can just connect onto our LDPE John Guest tube. I don't like burying any fittings in the wall, so I'm just going to have a short bit of copper through the wall, and the fittings will be exposed on the other side of the garage. You can recess this mixer, you know, it would look a little bit prettier I suppose, but then all of these fittings and all of these compression joints would all be buried in the wall and you wouldn't be able to see them. So if you ever had a problem when there was a leak on any of these, you'd never know until it was too late. All we need to do now is mark up 150mm centres for these copper pipes and drill two holes and then there's a small mounting bracket which goes dead in the centre of those two holes which the mixer fixes to. I'm going to drill a couple of pilot holes to start with and then I'll measure off of that, make sure it's level before I drill the 16mm clearance holes. So I've drilled two 16mm holes through the shower cubicle into the stud work at the garage on the other side and that'll give us a good screw fix in for the actual shower mixer. I can put some decent 2 inch screws in there and that's not going to go anywhere, that's going to support it really well. This is the little brass bracket that holds the mixer onto the wall. You put three screws in those slots and then the mixer just nips up onto that groove with some allen keys. But obviously to get this positioned exactly in the right place what I've done is I've just pushed the mixer through with the copper tails on, pushed it into position and then with a pencil I've just penciled round the end of the mixer. So then I can get this screwed into position, I can centre it in the middle of that circle that I've just penciled and that should give me the exact location for this bracket. I'd rather do it that way than just rely on measuring it and marking it because at least I now know that that's exactly where that mixer is going to end up. So now I can see the pencil mark that I've made around the mixer. I've just got to get this little brass bracket centered exactly within that circle and then put three screws in it. That's coming off. I just put a little bit of Sikaflex on the back of these flanges just to seal those penetrations. Put a bit of masking tape over the copper pipes because I don't want any sawdust or anything getting into those and then getting into the mixer. Just push that all the way home and that should okay. on. Push these little flanges home. Squeeze that little bit of sicker flex. Tighten up these little allen. If these compressions do drip 
a little bit, I can nip them up here. Mm. And if they do drip, they're going to drip into the tray. Mm. And not in the middle of the wall. So here are those two tails sticking through from the shower mixer into the garage. These are the two pipes that we need to connect the hot and cold to. I've just cut them back or marked them at 35 millimeters from the board. I'm just gonna cut them back a little bit. That gives me enough to push into the fitting with a little bit of spare. So I'm just gonna cut these to length. Just push that 15mm elbow on there now. And then we'll just cut this short and push it into the end of that 12mm fitting. So that completes the installation of the hot and cold water services to the shower. It just remains now to test everything. Right, I'm just going to turn the pump on and bring the water system up to pressure. All right, so just have a look at all the joints back there and round the boiler and that, and just make sure there's no water anywhere. All right. Yeah. It's probably take a little bit to come up to pressure. Everything in the boiler, all right. What about the little Jubilee clip in the toilet? I'll just have a check. Oh no, turn it off. Hey? Water. You're joking? No. How much? Quite a bit. Oh, what? Look. Come oh, on, man. Okay guys, so here's where the problem is. This is inside our Thetford cassette toilet. There's this blue hose which fills up the cistern and that's connected to our LDPE pipe with an adapter and obviously the only way we can connect onto that blue hose is with a barbed fitting and a jubilee clip and that is where the water is coming from this is the only jubilee clip joint in the entire van and it's the only one that's leaking out of all the other joints I hate jubilee clips they're an absolute nightmare I'll show you why I think this is leaking and what we're going to do to try and fix it. Now we can't leave this unattended obviously because water dripping down inside the toilet here is going to get underneath the tray and then that's just going to run throughout the van and it's going to get into all of these bits of furniture board and then we'll end up with a world of trouble. So we've really got to tackle this before we can go any further. Now the problem with Jubilee clips is just a bit of a poor design really a lot of them have like a square block on the back of the worm drive and that creates an uneven circle and you can see this one in particular has got this little step here so it doesn't pull up evenly and it leaves you with a little gap where water can just squeeze through this one is a little bit better in design it's not so much of a step in it but there is still that part where they overlap and that's where I suspect it's leaking from. And the trouble is with these things is when you do them up, there's a fine point between doing them up enough and doing them up too far. Because you can actually just make it completely worse by over tightening them. So how am I gonna solve this? Well, I jumped online on one of the Facebook caravan and camper van motorhome forums. There was a discussion there about the same exact thing. And one of the guys there uh, suggested using fuel clips from a motor spares place. So I popped down to my local Halfords and I've picked up these 12 to 14 mil fuel line clips. Now these have got a slightly different design. Let me just open up the packet so we can get a closer look. So there, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's a slightly different design. So that means it's got a more smoother circle to grip on that hose. So I'm hoping that these will do the trick. 
And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try a bit of PTFE tape around that barbed fitting so that will take up any irregularities on the inside of that piece of hose. So hopefully a combination of these two and we might be able to resolve that leak. But it's one thing that we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on because we can't do with having water leaking inside the van. So that's the barbed adapter which goes from a threaded connection onto that barb. That threaded connection has got a rubber washer inside there and also a little bit of PTFE tape on that joint. So that joint is actually fine. It's just where this hose is pushed onto that barbed fitting. That seems to be where the leak is. So I'm going to wrap a little bit of PTFE tape around that barb fitting and then I'm going to try that fuel line clip, see if that does the trick. Okay, so that's that joint remade. We've got a little bit of PTFE tape around the barb and we've got that new fuel pipe clip. It does seem to have gone on there a lot smoother. So fingers crossed, all will be good. Let's pump up the water. Yeah, turn it off. Yeah, there's a little puddle there. Okay, so it doesn't look like that's worked. It's still leaking that joint. So I've been down to my local caravan accessories shop this morning and got myself one of these 12 mil to half inch push fit adapters. So we'll give this a go. I think the previous hose union connections I was using were 10 mil. So maybe they're just not that big enough and I need to um, maybe warm up that hose and stretch it over a slightly larger fitting and I might get a tighter fit. Let's try this. Okay, so that's the fitting that I just taken out of there. I did have that bit of PTFE on that barb because that's where it was leaking from. It wasn't leaking from this thread and it wasn't leaking from this push fit fitting either. So this is what we've got this morning. Now this is really two fittings put together. It's a 15 mil push fit by half inch adapter. And then there's a 15 to 12 mil stem adapter pushed into that. Just to reduce that fitting down to 12 mil to match the LDPE pipe. So this will go onto the blue pipe. And then this hopefully will go into this hose. And that will make a bit of a firmer connection. This is 12 mil and this one was 10 mil. So maybe that was just a little bit too small. I may have to put this in some warm water just to soften it enough to get this inserted and I'm still going to use that fuel pipe clip because I think they are a better design than a normal Jubilee clip. Let's go and get some boiling water and let's try that out. Right, I've got some boiling water in the cup here. I'm just going to let this hose sit in here for a little while. Hopefully that's enough to just soften that. I'm expecting this to be a little bit of a tight fit. I hope you're liking the new mugs. If you fancy a mug yourself, you can click on the red bubble link at the top of the YouTube page. Grab yourself one of these and also give a little bit back to the channel in the process. Go on, son. Yeah, she's on. Awesome. I know that once that's cooled down, that's going to pull in nice and tight. I've got a lot more confidence with this joint. Yeah, that's lovely. Brilliant. That's super tight on there now. And the key I've been told with these Jubilees is not to do them up too much because you can over tighten the fitting and you can crush it you know and effectively create a leak so you just need to just nip them up so they're snug and no more really well to be honest with you if this leaks i don't know what more i could do this has got to be the one now that goes down in there ideally i want that Facing away like that, as it's out of the way. So it needs to be somewhere like that. 
Right, it's just getting a little bit of resistance on that clip now. So I think that's it. I'm not going to do that any more than that. You can just see it just sneaking in on it, but no more. I'm going to leave that now, and hopefully that has done the trick. We'll get that pushed onto that LDPE pipe, and then we can do a second pressure test. Or should I say the fourth pressure test? All right, fingers crossed everybody. Let's go and get the pump on. I've pumped up the system, the pump's gone off, we're up to full pressure, so we're up to about two bar. And just running a bit of tissue around the back here, just to make sure that is sound. And there's nothing on that tissue. Now the pump's just cut in again there, just to build up some pressure there, so. There's a bit, a bit of air in the system at the moment until we bleed it all through. No, it looks like we've cracked it, guys. I can't tell you how pleased I am. That has been stressing me out, something rotten for the last couple of days. That's the fourth connection we've made onto that toilet. So, Thetford, if any of you guys are watching these videos, I hope you've come up with a better design for the newer models because this hose situation is just ridiculous. You know, you just can't have a situation inside your van where you could potentially have a leak and that's a really poor fitting, to be honest, to be given that from a manufactured item. So, disappointed with that one, but I think we've got round it and I think that should be good. So there we go, guys. I'm so happy that that has fixed. I cannot tell you how much stress that's given me over the last couple of days. Having water running around in my van with all that nice new furniture board was giving me nightmares and sleepless nights. So it does go to show it helps to have the right fittings for the job. These are W4 Leisure products. They do a lot of caravan and motorhome products. I'll put some links in the description. That's where I got this fitting from. But it is, when I look at it, it's a John Guest fitting. So it is just a normal push fit fitting. It's a 15 mil by half inch barbed adapter with a 12 mil by 15 mil stem reducer pushed into it. So you can just get them easily off eBay. You can source them anywhere. So I'll link both products in the description below. If you've got a Thetford toilet and you're struggling like I am to make a decent connection onto it, click on those links. That'll get you out of trouble and that may save you a few sleepless nights in the process. Thanks for watching the videos, guys. Cheers.